Welcome to the Rugby League Lunch Hour. I'm Drew Darcher, your host, and joined by Josh McAllister, who does a little bit for Love Rugby League and also does a bit uh, for JDG Media as well. Uh, welcome to the show again. James has gone having a yeah. Christmas dinner somewhere out there in the world. He, he came in in an, a posh suit before. It's probably one of the, the smartest I've ever seen uh, James dressed, uh, and he's going to have a Christmas dinner. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully he can still fit in the suit after the dinner, and he hope, I hope he doesn't fill himself too much. Um, but we're going to be talking all things Super League uh, and the Championship in particular. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, the international scene as well. It's it's December now, uh, so we're, we're in that period of year where it goes a little bit quiet uh, on the news scene, but I think we've still got plenty of news to discuss. Uh, so we'll get straight into it. The the news coming out this morning, Josh, that Lee have confirmed the signing of uh, Jared Summer from Wigan for the 2020 season. Uh, what do you make of that signing? A very good signing, isn't it? He's a good player. I don't think he ever got his chance to shine at Wigan, uh, but everyone's seen the magic that he can produce. The only question now is, who's your half-back partnership at Lee? Because they've got, they've got four, I think, now. Uh, so who do you choose? Does he, does he partner up with Woods? Or... You know, they're spoiled for choice a little bit in some of their positions. I think Lee, I think they, they like to sign one or two too many in certain positions. But Jared Simon's obviously going to be in the start at 13. He's going to have to start, isn't he? Because for the championship, he's going to be magic. Yeah, uh, I think I think Jared Simon's got to start. He'll, he will be competing for half back spots uh, against Josh Woods, who's signed on a season long loan for a second season from Wigan. Um, Martin Ricciardo, obviously a Lee fans favourite, and Ben Reynolds as well, who's yeah. obviously spent a couple of seasons at Lee and re- returned to the Centurions last season from Wakefield. I, d- I don't know who you, s- who, you, who you start with there from, from them four because they're both, all four, all four, four of them. If, if you put two of them four together, you, you wouldn't complain, would you, especially in the Championship? I think, you, I think you're right in what you're saying. Is that, You've got to start Summit because I think is it. I think he, he provides that magic, doesn't it, in Super League. So I think in the Championship he'll be even better. Uh, I really enjoyed watching him a couple of years back for London Broncos. So I think Summit's got to start at seven. Usually six. And I pro- I'd be edging towards Ridgeard or Woods as my six. I'd probably go with Josh Woods go with to him. start over over Ridgeard. Uh, just because I think Woods has got a lot, a lot of potential, uh, and I think he, he, Woods could could be a Super League player for years to come. Do you think he'll get a chance at Wigan? It you know it, it all depends, doesn't it, on the future of Jackson Hastings, really? Uh, because Jackson Hastings could potentially be at Wigan for four or five years, and in that case, Woods might not get his chance. Or if uh, Hastings has a, a brilliant year with Wigan in Super League, maybe wins the the Man of Steel again, wins. Uh, some silverware with the Warriors and then gets picked up by an NRL club. We all know that his ambition is to go back to the NRL one day. So if he does go back to the NRL next year, then after a, another solid year in the Championship, could Woods then take a starting jersey at Wigan? Because obviously Tommy Lulawai as well, um, he's, he's not getting any younger as well at Wigan. So there will be a half-back spot there in, in one or two years' time. Uh, and I think, I think Woods is capable of doing it. He's a he's a wise head. He's up. He's an old head, isn't he? On young shoulders, um, I think which we don't little, really see too often these days. A little frustrated in the fact that he spent all the last season on loan at Lee, uh, and then the season before that he spent on dual registration with Swinton, and he made a couple of Wigan starts. Mm. So if you're the play and you see that you you're progressing, and then you see your club making signs like Jack Mason, you just start to doubt yourself and think, well, do I have to look for somewhere else for 2021? Because clearly he's not getting all. Does he? Does he? Just stick with it and hope that he can get a starting spot. Maybe he can impress the league and we can keep an eye. Adrian Lamb keeps an eye on him and then he starts in 2021. Yeah, possibly, but I, th- I think obviously with George Williams leaving Wigan, they needed to bring in a superstar because Tommy Lulawai, he does he does everything, all the basics well, uh, but he doesn't provide that spark that Williams does or what Hastings does. So I think Wigan needed to go out and buy that. Um, but Tommy Lulawai is a, a great um, defender. Uh, and I think that's what Wigan like about Tommy Lulawai. He's one of the best defensive halfbacks in the competition. I know a halfback is primarily uh, meant to to attack with the ball, um, but I think uh, in defence Tommy Lulawai is one of the best halves in the, in the game. 
And uh, news coming out of Perpignan as well this morning that Catalans have confirmed that they have released uh, halfback Matty Smith from his contract. I think it was 16 games he played for the Dragons last year uh, following his move from Saints. He's, he originally signed a two year deal. Uh, with Catalans, but has been released now. So obviously he had one left, one year left to run uh, on his contract. What do you make of that? Well, next, I saw a few comments. I think on your post, we're Wakefield fans wanting him, but at Wakefield you've already got Hampshire, Brough, and Miller. So mm. if he goes to Wakefield, where does he fit in? The problem is, I think Super League clubs are now, you know, all right now with the halfbacks. I think everyone, every club's now got their halfback partnership. So the question you've got to ask about Mike Smith is where next? Mm. Championship. Uh, well, the, well you, you've the got guess to before think, this morning would have been Lee. But you, you've got right, to something. think with Matty Smith, surely he's not going, going to go to Lee. Well, you don't need five. He'll be the fifth five, half yeah. back. Um, the thing is now with Matty Smith, I think all the Super League clubs, like you say, have done the business for, for 2020 regarding the half back spots. I don't. He's, he obviously wants to, to have a starting position at the club, that's why he's left Catalans, because he's not going to be getting over James Malone and Josh Drinkwater there next year. Uh, and they've got a couple of um, young halfbacks coming through the system as well. Um, so he obviously wants first team opportunities. Will he find that in Super League? The only team I can really think of where he could possibly go to is Toronto. But I think he'd have to work work his way in. Could he could he work his way all the, over Josh McCrone? Uh, Josh McCrone, do you think? I rate right, Josh McCrone. I know, I know yeah. some people don't. Some people do. I, I think he's all right. But yeah, in terms of Toronto, it's not a bad shout out to be fair. Um, but I, he'd have to. Work, I don't think he'd, he'd walk into Toronto and start in the six or seven. I think he'd have to have a pretty good yeah. season with yeah. them. Maybe wait his chance to, you know, around four or five. Or maybe hope that mm. well, not hope, but maybe an injury would see him be put in. But I think it's going to be tough for him to get in any Super League side now. With with coming to December, it's a pretty bad time, I think, to leave a club. Yeah, I'm, tr- I'm trying to think of where else he could go. Um, could he be? Obviously, he was once a Salford player. Could he return to Salford? Do you think? But then again, they've got who, who have they got? Kevin Brown, Tuilola here, Tuilola here in the halves, it's, and they're going to be the starting half back, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Unless you put well, who, who would they have full back? Actually, the only thing is you put two of your full back, Mike Smith. Well, they've got nine levels, nine levels. Oh, nine levels, yeah, so you wouldn't drop off, would you? No, you wouldn't. So, you, you, again, wherever he goes, he's going to have to fight for that starting yeah. position because by this time, every club's got their half back partnership. If you're not good at by now, you, you're pretty panicking. Yeah, pretty and, panicking, and, so. and when you look at the championship, the, there's only a couple of full time teams in the championship. Yeah. Obviously, Lee have got full time, but he's not going to go to Lee when you've got four half backs. London well, Broncos. They're a full time team. Yeah, he, he could, unless he takes the pay cut and goes part time. If if that's what he want, if he wants to start in spot at a club, and then he'll have to take a pay well, cut. Maybe we were speaking about it, about it in the office this morning. Work with it. Witness are, are probably looking for an half back as well, uh, but obviously they're they're a part time team this year. Um, I th- I think he could build up a pretty good combination with uh, Danny Craven in the house of the Vikings. Uh, he's a St. Helens lad, he's Matty Smith, so obviously that's not too far from witness. So would he be, be prepared for the final couple of couple of years of his contract to, to maybe drop down to a part-time wage and, and think about the future, but also apply his trade uh, at witness? I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't know where the, the next destination is for, for Matty Smith, but uh, he's a great guy off the field, to be honest. He's a, he's a great role model, does everything... Uh, by the book, he's very professional in what he does. So um, yeah, a, I, I hope he can find. I hope he can find a, a club uh, pretty soon. He's a good player, and I think even at his time at Wigan, he was all right. His kicking game was good. I think he was. He organised the team well. I thought he was a good player, and then it just sort of after he left Wigan, it dipped from there, didn't he? And he's never really found a place he can call home. Never mm. found a starting spot. So it is. It's going to be tough for him, and I imagine the next couple of weeks, him and his agent are going to be working as hard as they can to find full-time, part-time. Uh, Louis Banks uh, has put the first comment in. If you want us to discuss anything at all uh, on the Rugby League Lunch Hour, uh, just put your comments in. Uh, we'll, we'll try and answer your questions the best that we can. Louis said, do you think it's uh, it's right that Kevin Sinfield uh, is the right man to look, look over English Rugby League? It seems that everything he touches at the moment goes backwards, no experience in coaching or management. And he walks into two high-profile jobs at Leeds in England 
and both have gone backwards. Uh, do you agree? Well, you, you look at it and you, you can't disagree with that, can you? He's gone to win. Do, it, it, it gone, he went to Leeds and Leeds didn't do as well as maybe they could have. He's gone internationally and again internationally it doesn't look as solid as it could have been. But at the same time, it, it, everyone knows he's got a smart head, he's got experience in rugby league. So it's a tough one. I think maybe he's the escape goal. Uh, because they're doing so badly, I, I think that was, that's a tough one. Like, you, see, you can see both sides of it. Well, I'll answer the question in a slightly different way. I don't think it should be in two high-profile jobs. Um, I don't think I don't think it. Kevin Sinfield should be the director of rugby at Leeds and the director of rugby at the RFL because I think there is a slight conflict of interest there. I think he might it might do one or two days a week at the RFL, um, and I think that's a job that needs full time. Um, Focus really. Um, I think, I think, it, uh, especially considering on the <laughs> the disastrous GB tour that we that we've just witnessed uh, over in the southern hemisphere, I think he should he should, he should put one or the other really to it to concentrate on and put his sole focus in because I imagine for for Kevin it's a pretty stressful job. Uh, well, Just jobs. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I assume it being at Leeds and being under the, the, the crisis that the Rhinos have been in over the last year or two that it's been quite difficult on him and it's put a lot of weight on his shoulders and obviously the, the England and Great Britain stuff will only add to that um, I, I, I don't think it's the reason why I don't think Kevin Simfield is the reason why Leeds have gone backwards though no, I, think that, I, think, though, yeah. I think the reason why Leeds have gone backwards is they've, they've had le- legends come, come through playing at Leeds all the career or most of the career, and they just, they've left the club or they've retired. Um, Rob Burrow and Danny McGuire in twenty seventeen, obviously they they went to, out on a high. They won the grand final. They beat Castleford at Old Trafford. Uh, they went out on a high. It was a, a, gr- a great story for the for the club back then. But obviously they've not replaced them leaders. And Danny Mc, Danny McGuire is a is a magician, isn't he? Of of Super League, he's one of the greatest. Um, British players to, to come out of the game in the last 50 years uh, and Rob are all the same um, so they've not replaced them you go back a couple more years when Sinfield was still playing Sinfield, Kylie Lulawai left uh, Jamie Peacock left there's, there's five big leaders there that we've just named who have, who have left the Rhinos in recent years and I just don't think they've recovered from, from losing all, all of those players and, and obviously Jim, Jamie Jones Buchanan's now retired uh, this year, um, so th- yeah, you there have seen big, big gaps to fill it, haven't they? Yeah. And they've not done it. And you haven't seen that sort of change at any of the club, you know, like Wiggins, Sean Lachlan's still there, they've still got a leader. You've not sort of seen that change at any of the clubs to see how they've been impacted. If it had happened to another club and they've managed to retain where they were the season before without the big names, then you start to t- say, well, oh, Leeds should be doing better. But because they're the one of the few clubs that have had so many big players leave in recent years, they're not. The, the pressure's on them, and obviously, you say there's loads of youngsters coming through. Talented youngsters, they just need that leader that they've lost over, over the past few years. Yeah, true. Uh, so, just to wrap up on, on Louis's question about coming to Field, I don't think he should be in two high profile jobs. I, I don't think he should be the director of rugby at the RFL and uh, of Leeds. I think he should put one or the other focus on one, uh, and I think he'll find it much easier um, just focusing on one than rather than trying to balance them both at the same time. Um, Cameron Winstanley also says should Wayne Bennett carry on as coach of England slash Great Britain and if not who do you want in to get the job obviously we discussed this last week we Cameron but we'll discuss it again we love this debate, uh, we? next week I'll put my um, two pennies worth in uh, to start I don't think Wayne Bennett should carry on as England or Great Britain coach uh, I think it's time for a, a new leader uh, I think he's he's took England pretty far since he came into it, into his role in twenty sixteen. Obviously, we, England reached the the World Cup final in twenty seventeen, uh, but the the Lions tours, it was woeful, wasn't it? Uh, the, the tour is sadly losing four out of four games. Uh, it was a, a very very disheartening tour. I just think it's time for a, a new man, and I think that man. Is Sean Wayne. Um, he's not in a job at the moment, uh, a full time job that is, uh, and I think he'd jump at the chance to, to coach his country. See, I'm on the fence. The past couple of weeks, I've said I'm, I, I, I thought Wayne Bennett would be kept on given the job, but I'm on the fence. I wouldn't be too disappointed if he got kept on because of his experience, you know. He got, he's got England places, 
I think you've seen them develop develop over him. He's, he's got experience in the NRL. He's a quality coach. I think maybe his assist. I don't know what it is, but obviously it's clear for all that he doesn't know too much about the Super League. So I don't know if that's up to him or his assistants to sort of inform him and say, look, these are the plays in the Super League. These are the plays you need to start playing, not just NRL because they've got the experience to play there. Um, but at the same time, if Sean Wayne was to be the man to uh, to take over, then I don't think anybody could be too disappointed because you know what you bring. But I don't. I just don't think Wayne Bennett watches enough for Super League. Well, that's what I mean. So I don't know if it's up to him or his assistants to say, look, these are the players in the Super League. You have to start playing these. And or maybe Wayne Bennett doesn't listen, but it's it's up to someone in that in that coaching room to say, look, these are the players in the Super League that are playing better than the NRL players. I know they play in the NRL, which is the best competition. These are the players you start playing. Yeah. So someone obviously has to take control of that because Wayne Bennett at the minute is picking on experience rather than form, isn't it? Yeah, but he seems to be very loyal with his picks as well. Yeah, yeah. He um, does. I I personally thought Ryan Sutton um, of the Canberra Raiders should have been picked this year. I think he's had a fantastic season in the NRL. Um, and obviously Wayne Bennett didn't choose to pick him for whatever reason, but he but he picked Ryan Hall, who I think it was. Made six appearances for the Roosters yeah. last season. Struggled with injuries. Call. Yeah, struggled with injuries at the start of the season. Didn't play many games, but because of his experience and what he's seen of him before, that's why he's picked him, hasn't he? Rather yeah. than for. So that's what I mean. I think it's up to someone in that staff. Maybe even if Wayne joins the coaching staff and says to him, "Look, these are the players we know can play well in the Super League." But what what do you think, like a Regan Grace thinks when you see where, where, when you consider how how well Regan Grace has performed for Saints this year, how many tries he's scored, his pace, his footwork, his finishing, uh, and he's he's won the competition with Saints, uh, being named in the the Super League Dream Team, but then he's overshadowed by yeah. someone who's who's literally played six first team games this season it's disheartening isn't it because I think that was the, one of the most controversial calls in the in the Great Britain lineup in, in the squad is that he wasn't picked and I think everyone you know fans from Wigan Leeds anyone that wasn't a Sounds fan saw the, saw the form and talent that he displayed in 2019 so he should have been there and I, I don't know if that will motivate him for, if there is a next time for Great Britain motivate him to say right next time I am going to get picked or, or someone Again, in the coaching staff, has to tell tell Wayne Bennett, look, you can't pick Ryan Hall because he's played six games, or maybe next year he plays ten games. Or the Regan Grace, who's played almost every game and, and, and scored almost every game as well. He's a talented player, uh, so there's, there's some, something's gone gone wrong in the in the coaching staff, hasn't it? So, so are you, are you saying so, Wayne Bennett to keep his job? To answer Cameron's question, you can't sit on the fence, uh, here, Josh. He's Bennett, got... but unless it's only Wayne, I, I can only see Wayne taking him further than Bennett. That would be what would my comment would be on that. What's all Benny Toad? Are you saying? For only you for sound Wayne. like a politician here, Josh. Come on. <laughs> all right, I'll go Bennett out, Wayne. In. I'll go oh, uh, go on. Yeah, he's I'll changed change his it, opinion change it, since last, last week. You must be listening to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Mitch says that Gr- Regan Grace and Liam Watts uh, should have both gone. Uh, completely agree with you there, Mitch. Uh, Mitch also asks, so, uh, any predictions for the championship say the top three we'll go for top five because obviously that's a playoff format in the championship I think we discussed this as well last week but uh, because Mitch has asked we'll, we'll discuss it again I think I'm going to change my mind well. Mitch I can't I can't I can't give you the order in, in which they'll finish in the top five I'll give you I'll give you the five teams who I think will finish the so uh, in 2020 top top I think I think Lee will gain promotion uh, they've done some very very good business over the off season I think they've still got a couple of signings to make as well um, I think a re- real shrewd signing for the, for the Centurions is Craig Muller on a season long loan from uh, Wigan um, not a lot of people will know will know anything about him because he's, I think he's only played three first team games for Wigan uh, but he's played a lot of, at dual registration at Swinton can play full back wing centre half back he's even played hooker for Wigan's first team uh, I think he'll add a lot to to the Centurions next season. I think if he, if he can nail down a starting spot, then I think uh, we can really st- see him to, to start to flourish. He'll, I think he'll be, he'll be targeting that number one shirt, to, to be honest, um, in 2020. I, I think they'll gain promotion. The rest of the five, I think York have recruited very well. I've got to put York in there. Big fan of James Ford, the coach as well. Uh, he's done a terrific job 
at the Knights. They do good stuff on and off the field, don't they? Uh, so there's two teams about five. If, Who else if, am I going with? If you watch up, they do. They're not. I don't. In my opinion, I don't think they're the flashiest team. I don't think the halfbacks or, or, or the backline are the flashiest team. But they do the simple things right. They make little mistakes. They complete the sets. They get the kick away. And eventually, when the opposition's tired, then they make them. They mm-hmm. make their breaks and they score their tries. I think they do the very small things very right, and I think that's what helps in their championship because the squad isn't it's talented. There's, there's, there's no one in that squad a, a big, big, big name is there? Yeah. Like there is at Lee or Toulouse, but because they do the little things right and they work together yeah. as a team, that's what helps them. That's what's what had helped them finish that high. There's a, there's a couple of big names all for for next season. There James, is, yeah. James Green, Chris Clarkson. Yeah. We've made a couple more, but Got the names are Clarkson, still. James Green, Will Sharp, Jimmy Kynhorst, obviously. Jimmy Kynhorst, yeah. You know, of course, and yeah. a lot of people said he, sh- he could be playing in the Super League. Germany International. Um, uh, I'll say Featherstone as well. They've made some good yeah. signings. Uh, London and Toulouse. Not, I don't, I don't know which order, don't ask me which order, but I've said me five. Lee, York, Toulouse, London, Featherstone. Obviously, Featherstone have signed Brett Ferris and um, Jake Sweeting as well from, from Castle Through's a, a good little half back. Um, yeah, I, I, I think Fev, Fev uh, surprised me last season. I know, that, I know it's a different coach with James Webster for 2020 compared to Ryan Carr last season, but uh, they did surprise me. They wiped my eye last season because I think I predicted them to finish like seventh or something like that. Uh, but they went, they went on and played some very good, uh, good rugby. Uh, obviously they got into the playoffs last season yeah I like the look of Fev uh, Toulouse very entertaining team to watch but the only thing to lose is it's like Catalans in Super League it's that away form uh, what they struggle with so if they can touch that up somehow um, then they could be serious contenders to gain promotion um, to Super League I, I'd like to see them in Super League I think it'd be great to have two French teams and it'd be good, good for the TV deal as well uh, because obviously more money for for rugby league is better than anything uh, that we can imagine at the moment. It's, oh, we've got a co- <laughs> comments off Joshua Beckett saying no witness in the top five. I reckon it will just squeeze in. I think they, they wouldn't be the top five. You said I completely agree with w- with the change that I think Toulouse will win the championship next year. I okay. think the the team they've already had Mark Carella, Jonathan Ford. Uh, a few other players have got are very talented. Then they've added the likes of Harrison Hansen, Frank Winterstein, J- Jai Hitchcock. I think next year, as you say, if they can sort out the form home and away, um, then I think that they're I think the second favourites in the bet Fred. See, I was thinking I was thinking about putting winners in in the five then, but I just don't think I don't know actually. They've got they've got some quality players. Jack Owens and Danny Craven are two top champ- top end championship players, aren't they? Um, Maybe Logan, Logan Tompkins as well as has joined yeah. the Vikings for twenty twenty. They've got the retainer Chapelo brothers. So I think they've got a decent squad. They, I like Jake Spedden as well. The centre they've signed. It's a tough one. Kenny Baker's obviously done a very good job at North Wales over the last couple of seasons. I think they're a team where if they finish top five, you wouldn't sure. be surprised. And if they finish outside the top five, again, you wouldn't be surprised. They're a team that you can't really judge on. Obviously, they've got you know, one, one of the best coaches in the, get, in the game, Tim Sheen's leading the way. Uh, maybe if they sign Mike Smith. Actually, I'll make an amendment. <laughs> I'll make an amendment. You're going to swap them out for York. Witness in, Featherston out. Oh. That's what I like. Controversial. Just because of Tim Sheens. Tim Sheens has swung it there for me. Um, Go on, Sheens. Yeah, I think Witness will squeeze in, Josh. Josh, you've persuaded me there. <laughs> Witness, Witness are in the top in my top five of the championship. Um, Mitch has said, got to agree with you all five, but that was before I said <laughs> Witness in Featherstone out. Um, so, so I think that'll be my five. Are you still sticking with? Yeah, you're the original five. I think with Witness, Toulouse, I, uh, Lee, York, Featherstone. London. Yeah, I think we'd miss it. Lose to, Wait, to oh, get from uh, uh, if I had six. Josh says uh, mission six. accomplished, proud of himself. <laughs> um, so he should be. I don't, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, I think witness will just manage to squeeze in, but I don't. I can't see them uh, challenging from for for promotion this year. Just that I just think the, the squad is a good squad, but it, I think it's just a little bit too young. 
uh, for 2020 promotion. But hey, we'll, we'll see. Former Hull KR prop Harry Barlow's joined York on trial terms. Uh, and also former Castleford uh, Wakefield and uh, Huddersfield prop Craig Hubie's announced his retirement from the game. Uh, 33 years of age. Had a pretty good career as well. Um, in Yorkshire, <laughs> he's, he's not moved anywhere else but Yorkshire. Matt Frawley, the Huddersfield halfbacks, returned to Australia, Josh. He came, didn't he, on a two year deal? Huddersfield fans, maybe some Super League fans expecting big things. I think he signed from Canterbury Bulldogs. Um, and then he just not delivered, has he? Um, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's settling in, and it, you know, with the other side of the world. Maybe a, a different sort of playing style, but he's just not settled in, has he? I think it's three, three tries, I think he scored. And I think if you look on the stats, I don't think he makes it in the top 20 for try assists, which is as your halfback, you need, you need them to be yeah. the one producing those assists. Uh, so he, as obviously he's not just settled in, but you know we I, I wish for the best of all. Hopefully we see him in, in the NRL in a couple of years, or, or wherever he ends up. Apparently he's gone to Australia to continue his playing career, so maybe he'll go to one of those local cups and make his way up. Yeah, I can't see him playing in the NRL. Anytime uh, soon, no. <laughs> Reece Lynn has been given the inaugural uh, RFL President's Award in recognition of his mentoring work with young offenders. I didn't even know he worked with young offenders until. Uh, yesterday when the, the award was uh, revealed but fair, fair play to Riesling making Wakefield uh, proud uh, we've picked out the top six fullbacks in the 2019 Super League season headlined by Lachlan Coote it's got to be Ryan Hampshire of Wakefield yeah one of their standout players last year Wigan Zach Ardacre well, well former London half back now now Wakefield uh, fullback sorry uh, Alex Walker, Scotland international. Now levels of Black Mean Descent, England Knights international. Uh, also on the list. Jack Walker, England Knights international. Also on the list. What do you make of that list, John? Can't argue with it, can you? Can't, can't argue, argue with it. A lot, of, argue, a lot of people yeah. were born at the step from Ratchford words on it. Um, I don't think he, did, he, did he play enough games to be. I, I just, this is why they include him in the list. I just don't, I thought, He had a, a lengthy spell where he was out injured. Uh, didn't he? And that's why they include him. I'm not saying he's not in the top six halfbacks on his day, but that's why uh, I didn't include him. Chris Robinson says who will be relegated from Super League. Oh, Jason Durkin also says lead to goal this year, in his opinion. Strong team uh, with more to come in, I'm told. Yeah, uh, I completely agree with you, Jason. It's like you've been listening to the first half an hour uh, because uh, my money is on Lee going, going up to Super League uh, next season. Uh, Cameron, Cameron Wins on the ads. Apologies if it were covered last week. Most influential new signing. Think Maloney will have a massive impact. Most influential signing. Super League. Put us on the, the spot there. Aiden Caesar will have a big impact at the yeah. Giants' morning. If they finish top, if they can finish top half, top six. But, but I, al I also think that we're going to be crying out for a world class prop for a number of years. Have you got that? And I think I think they've got that in George Burgess. No, I think I think George Burgess because it could have a, a big impact on the Warriors next season, um, on and off the field. Obviously, we're, we're going to put a lot of young forwards: Liam Byrne, Ollie Partington, Morgan Smithies. They've got a, a lot of good young forwards coming through, uh, but I think they need uh, a world class player to, to learn from, and I think George Burgess is just that. Uh, what whatever he is, fifteen times, sixteen time England international. Uh, played over 100 games in the NRL for, for South Sydney Rabbitohs. Uh, I think he could could make a big impact, but Hull have made so many good signings as well. Their forward pack, I think, is going to be one of the best. Ma season. Manu Mao, he, he'll, he will make an impact because yeah, he he's, he's absolutely frightening, isn't he? he is uh, he's, he's big, he's scary, big, he's scary. He can put a, a good hit on. Uh, I think he'll make a, a big, big impact for Hull. I'd like well, to see James Maloney do really well at Carlin Dragons because it's always nice to see Carlin Dragons do well. It's just, again, it's getting that away from. But James Maloney is a top class player, isn't he? He, he was he was great in the NRL. But still, he was still. It's not like he's well. I know he's getting on a little bit, but he was still playing week in week out in the NRL. Mm -hmm. And he's a quality player. So if he can just replicate that at the Carlin Dragons, I think he'll be very influential. Sonny Bill Williams. Of course. How yes. can we forget Sonny Bill Williams as well? It is Impacts on and off the field ball for the game. We've seen new uh, press from New Zealand, press from Australia come all the way over just to speak to Sonny Bill about his move to Toronto Wolfpack. There's not many rugby league players who will be unveiled as a signing at the Emirates Stadium, home of Arsenal uh, in London, to a packed press room. 
Sonny Bill's got to make a, a massive impact on off the field. He'd be the obvious choice for me to to, to make the, the biggest impact in 2020 on and off the field. Everyone knows who Sonny Bill is. Everyone want, wants to be like Sonny Bill. Every, every young player wants to be like uh, Sonny Bill. Uh, so he'd be my obvious choice. But other choices, I think George Burgess is a shrewd signing for Wigan. Uh, Manny Rao as well for, for Hull. Uh, but only a massive signing for Catalans. I think I, I think there's a lot, lot to be excited about for, for Super League 2020. There's been a lot of good signings. I had a prediction this week um, on one of my friends who predicted Toronto to finish top three. No way. Now I told him I'd say it out loud on this to see your no reaction. Way. So I, I said to him, I think he's, he, he must have. No. <laughs> oh, whatever he's been. Uh, Chris, Robin, Chris Robinson says, "Who will be relegated from Super League next year?" Matt, Matt, I'm, I'm going straight in for Hull KR. In terms of their recruitment compared to everyone else's recruitment, it has to be Hull KR, doesn't it? Yeah, Hull KR. Uh, I think Huddersfield. I said it last week. Huddersfield have recruited very well uh, over the last, well, over the off season. Sorry, and. Um, I think those signings are, are far better than Hulk Yars. Uh, but then again, can I see a, 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 well, a Tony Smith side being That's relegated? It, yeah. I don't, but at this moment in time, I think Hulk Yars have got the weakest team in Super League compared to, to the bottom four rivals, shall we say, in Toronto, uh, Huddersfield, um, who else is the Hull FC? Wakefield. Wakefield. Castleford. I, I, I worry about Wakefield next year. Do you? Yeah, I think they'll be down there. I think if this is going to be a relegation battle, it's going to be between Wakefield and Hull KR. Uh, past reckon? Yeah, a couple of years ago, I, predict, I, I, I was quite... I was impressed with Wakefield. I thought they were going to finish top, top, top. Um, well, not top of the Super League, but up high. Top, top, top. Top, top, top. Up high. And I think this this year, coming up, 2020, they're going to struggle, I think, with Hull KR. I think them two are going to be the ones battling out. Really? Yeah. Well, controversial. There you go. He's not sitting on the fence anymore. <laughs> I've got to make it, yeah. He's got make it Josh Morris McAllister. Uh, <laughs> Dom Hump. Dom so is Bevan French top try score a question mark? It, it depends where he plays. Who's playing? Come on, I, I think Bevan French would be a nice little um, option to put, put a little bet on. Um, for Man of Steel. Well, do you know his odds? I, th- I think, I think we, we did a piece on, yeah, on the Man of Steel odds a, uh, a couple of months back and, and they were very good. I think he was 25 to 1 or something like that, or maybe 33 to 1 or something like that. It was pretty high odds compared to like Jackson Hastings and Blake Austin, Gareth Winnipeg, etc., and James Maloney. Um, but where, yeah, does he, where does he I, play? I, I, I fancy very friendly for Man of Steel. If he plays full back for Wigan, uh, Zach Ardaker moves to centre. I think Bevan French, because uh, he gets fans off off the seats, uh, and that's what people like. That's what the voters will like. I think he could be a nice little option for Man of Steel for top try scorer. Uh, as Dom Hunt asks, uh, for me it's where I don't where know. he plays because I don't obviously they're giving Zach Ardaker the number one spot. Zach Ardaker was Wigan's. Yeah, but Ad- 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 if you remember, Hardacre was at Wigan last season and he didn't get the number one shirt. Morgan Esker got the number one shirt. I don't think you can read too much into his numbers. numbers. But he, he was the, one of the Wigan's best players last season, so why would you then make him... How can you then drop... Well, you wouldn't drop him as such, but you'd change his position. And we all know he can play centres. He's played centres in his career. He went and played centre in the NRL with Penrith Panthers, so he can play the centres. But it's hard to see... If you look at the outside in, it's hard to see why you would change his position when he played so well in 2019 for Wigan. But at the same time, Benjamin French hasn't left the NRL to come over to the Super League, probably on big money, to either sit on the bench to be an impact player in the 40th minute, 50th minute, or, or to start in the centres himself. I think he came over to be fullback. So and if you read into that, exactly. I think he's going to start. Wigan are paying big money for him. He's not going to want to sit on the yeah, bench, I is he? I can't imagine he came over cheap. You're exactly right there, Josh. Uh, Joshua Beckett says, Hastings will be very influential if he carries over his Salford form. He was quite underwhelming for the GB Lions in saying that most players were. Uh, yeah, I think I think Josh is right. Um, it was unbelievable for, for Salford, wasn't it? That's what got him the, the Man of Steel. Salford bears the team around him. He built up a good partnership with two over here in the halves. 
I think he'll go all right at Wigan. I think he'll do well. Uh, I think Wigan need to build the squad around him more. But there's a lot more. Uh, it, with all respect to Salford, there's a there's a, a bigger calibre of international players at Wigan. Uh, there's more superstars at Wigan than what there is at Salford. So it's going to be interesting to see how uh, Hastings gels into the team. Uh, as for his form for GB, Joshua was right. I don't think many players could, can be uh, f- completely proud of the way they performed on the Lions tour. Um, it was very structured, I think, the way they attacked, which is how Jackson Hastings plays. He very much plays off the cuff. He plays, he, he plays what he sees to, whereas with Great Britain, it looked like it was trying to stick to a plan every game and, and very, very, you know, t- to, to whatever Wayne Bennett has told them. Whereas yeah. at Salford, you saw his flair and his attack and he was given the freedom to attack how he wanted to attack, which hopefully is what he'd be allowed to do with him and with the likes of Zach Hardick and Devin French playing alongside him. You know, we could see a back-to-back man of steel winner. Maybe so, maybe so. Uh, Lovie Banks says, Huds, Huddersfield, Wakefield uh, and Hulke are down the bottom uh, in 2020, but it may come down to who has the least amount of injuries. Good point. Is a good point. Injuries always play a part. Hulke, I've got, I think, have got the bigger squad out of the three. Well, they signed half a bracket. Well, yeah, yeah, they did. But I think, I think Wakefield have got far more quality than what Huddersfield and Hulke are have got. Uh, when you compare the starting, well, 17s on paper. Um, I think it's out of Huddersfield and, and um, Wakefield. Uh, no, okay. I, think I cannot see agencies are going from an NRL grand finals with Canberra Raiders playing every week in week out. Yeah. I don't know how old he is, but he was still playing week in week out. What, what, do, what do you reckon Salford will be like next year? It, it, it's tough because you you you're going to want to compare them to 2019 with Jackson Hastings. And obviously next year they've lost a man like Jackson Hastings, so it's for them. It's who's next, Jackson Hastings. Two lolly here plays well now. Levels he'll play well, so. They've still got you know the the big some big names there, but they'll they'll jack the loss of Jackson Hastings. I don't might prove too much. I don't think we'll see them in the grand final again. I don't think we might. I don't think we'll see them in the top four again. Um, but I don't think they'll be struggling either. I mm. think they'll be with Ian Watson. I think they'll be a solid side. I just and I, I can't see Huddersfield down there because I cannot see Aiden Caesar coming from the NRL to the Huddersfield Giants to be in the bottom two of the Super League. I just can't see it happening. But it depends, again, injuries, I just feel they've struggled with injuries over the past few years, doesn't they? It depends. What, the, the youngsters, a lot of youngsters stepping up. Uh, Don Mac- McIntosh stepped up. So, like you said, it's with injuries, you never know what's going to happen, do you? Turkey International Aid and Caesar as well. Uh, Lee's squad for 2020. Let's uh, have a preview on Lee's squad. They've now got 24 registered players uh, for the 2020 campaign. Uh, we've made a piece on it on loverabelieve.com. Uh, how it's shaping up for 2020. Um, we'll just go through them quickly. This is how we think they'll start the season. Uh, roughly, squad numbers have yet to be announced. Uh, but that, Greg McNally at fullback, Adam Higson and Ryan Ince on the wings. Ian Thornley and Junior So in the centres. Josh Woods and Jared Summit in the halves. Mark Ione uh, and Tom, Tom Spencer at prop. Liam Hood at hooker. Jordan Thompson, Ben Halliwell and Danny Addy finish off the starting 13. Matthew Wilde, Andy Thornley, Sam Brooks and Nathan Mason on the bench. In the reserves and competing for spots in the first team will be Martin Ridyard, Ben Reynolds, Nick Gore, Liam Forsyth, Craig Mullen, Callum Field and Brad Holroyd. It's a very strong team looking at that. It is a very strong team. Your, your, the biggest challenge was who you were at the fullback because obviously Craig Mullen can play fullback and he's got some pace, hasn't he? He's young. Um, so, and, and the, the reserves there, I, I, as I mentioned at the start, I think they, they like to sign a lot of players in the same position. So, right here in the, in the hearts, we've got Reynolds, Sam, Woods, and Vidyard. So, two of them, all four could start in any championship side, but two of them are going to be benched or reserves every week. And then in the centres, they've got Thornley, Sal, Mullen, Liam Forsyth. Again, two, all four are worthy of starting in a championship team, but only two of them play. So I don't know, that might bring the best out in each other, but at the same time, there's going to be some quality players sitting, sitting in the reserves for them. So, a, a lead to loose final, possibly. There you go. Possibly. Uh, Josh Woods and Craig Mullen have joined the off season long loan from Wigan. Uh, Papua New Guinea duo Dion I and Jesse Joe Parker have signed new deals at Whitehaven. 
Uh, the Charlie's Cup first round draw takes place tonight at Doncaster Base Club Bentley. Uh, that will be streamed on the BBC Sport website uh, from 6.30pm. 44 community clubs uh, will be in the hat for the first round draw. Uh, we've got a quiz on site as well. Can you name the previous 30 Harris Underwood trophy winners? I found it very difficult. I'll give yourself a, a good pass on the back if you, if you, if you get 100% on that quiz. Uh, our latest Samuel say as well as on site, should the RFL give Wayne Bennett a new deal? We discussed that earlier on in the show. Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments below, please. Uh, but there's a lot of NRL news that's happening this week. Featherstone have uh, given a new deal to Connor Curry as well. Uh, as well as the, the, the Lee squad for 2020, we've also done a piece on how Toronto Wolfpack squad is shaping up. Uh, for 2020, they're on the, the first maiden season in Super League, of course. Uh, the squad numbers have yet to be confirmed, but they've also got 24 players in the squad. Uh, let's just go through the team. We've, this is how we think they'll line up. Uh, Gareth O'Brien at fullback, Matty Russell, Liam Kelly on the wings, Chase Stanley and Ricky Latelli in the centres, uh, Joe jo Mellor and Josh McCrone in the halves, Brad Singleton and Darcy Lussick starting at props. Andy Akers in at nine, Sonny Bill Williams, Boarding Thompson and John Wilkin in the back row. Subs is James Cunningham, Anthony Mullally, Andrew Dixon and Adam Sidlow. In the reserves competing for spots in the first team is Gavin Springer, Gary Wheeler, Blake Wallace, Haki Maludi, um, Greg Worthington, Ryan Briley and Tom Albison. Good squad. The thing it's with the Toronto is, it's pretty good squad. It's old, isn't it? Yeah. Like it's, it's an older squad. It's an older squad, an experienced squad. Um, but the thing with Toronto is, it's not just ex the excitement they're going to bring on the field. It's the excitement off the field. It'd be good. It'd be interesting to see the attendances compared to other home games for you know, the likes of Wigan League, just because of, as you say, Sonny Bill Williams. Mm. Because everybody wants to go see Sonny Bill Williams. If Sonny Bill Williams is playing near you, if you're a rugby union fan, it might even persuade you to go try it. it might not. It might. It'd be interesting to see the attendance differences for Toronto and other home and other other home games for clubs. I, I, th I think um, when Salford host Toronto at the AJ Bell Stadium, I think the attendance will increase by a couple of hundred people more because I think Sale Sharks fans will, will recognise Sonny Bill's name and want to go watch Sonny Bill Williams, and obviously because the the ground show, they they play at the same stadium. Uh, I think. Sofa's game against Toronto will attract uh, some sale fans. They won't attract them all, but I think uh, so, some some will be a couple of isn't more. It? If, well, at the start of this, you linked Mike Smith. We didn't link, but you said a possible move for Mike Smith is Toronto. But they've already got Blake Wallace in the reserves, who's True. proved to be a very good player, and he's he he fights for the first team. So it's a, it's, it's become I, I just can't, I just can't Mike see Smith. Matty Smith at anywhere because it's, it's, it's so tough, isn't it? A, a lot of clubs have got. I've already got the players in the position, so. I don't, I don't know what Matty Smith is going to do, to be honest with you. Uh, Fiji International, Suliasi Vinavalu will move to Rugby Union uh, at the end of the 2020 NRL season, so we will be playing for Melbourne Storm next season. Uh, Jason Moss up signed a new deal with Whitehaven. Uh, we've got a piece on site, um, top five international players of 2019. Jared Warrior, Hargreaves of New Zealand is in the go on site to, to find out the other four. Catalans have signed Toulouse per... Uh, John Desaria and Gavin Margarite uh, from Toulouse um, get the, they both played for France at the World Cup 9s uh, Desaria came through the system at the Dragons played a couple of games for the first team before going out on spells at Lee and Toulouse uh, but I'm quite excited by uh, Margarite, I think he could play a lot of games for, for the Dragons first team this season, he's a big unit scores a lot of tries uh, in the centre position, uh, I think he can be a good signing Swinton forward Ben Austin has been forced into an early retirement. He's played 101 career games, uh, but he's had to, to retire from the sport um, upon specialist med medical advice. Uh, Catalans have released the 2020 squad numbers. Uh, I always love a, 20, uh, a squad numbers piece, Josh. Uh, number one, David Mead. Two, Lewis Tierney. Three, Lange. Four, Willie Army. Five, Yaha. 6 Maloney, 7 Drinkwater, 8 Casting, 9 McAlorum, 10 Moore, 11 Whitley, 
12, uh, Joel Tompkins, 13, Garcia, 14, Busquet, 15, Simo, 16, Davis, 17, Julien, 18, De Costa, 19, Goudemond, 20, Albert, 21, Seguier, 22, uh, Romano, 23, Maria, 24, Batieri, 25, Morg, 28, Cassiano, 29, Sam Tompkins. What a squad that on is. On paper, up. unbelievable, unbelievable. They, they just need to do the same on the pitch and get inside a good form home and away. Mm. Tom no. Is Tom Davies going to get a few games? I think so. I think he could possibly get over Lewis Tierney on the wing. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how that works because obviously I think I think it was Tom Davis who got over Lewis Tierney on the wing at Wigan and that's why Tierney moved to Castles and now yeah, Tom Davis has gone to Castles as well. Uh, Cameron King has returned to the NRL with Cronulla Sharks so he's gone from Featherstone Rovers so he's gone from Featherstone to the Shire of Cronulla. Um, that is some move. He's got a good agent and all that. Uh, <laughs> we've got a piece on site top 13 standout players of the 2019 NRL season as well John Bateman included in that for his stellar year uh, over in Australia Pep Talk featured that's, up, that's on line as well is Jamie Ellis going back to Hull KR uh, Sam at Talit that's now being confirmed as well by the Centurions an over in depth piece from Zach Holland it's on Arthur Beats in the first indigenous Australian to captain his country. We've looked into his career in good detail. The latest RL diet is on site as well. That that has gone down a treat. Uh, that went out last Saturday. Uh, we spoke to Great Britain and Warrington prop uh, or back rower uh, Joe Philbin on intermittent fasting. Uh, he doesn't eat until midday. Um, he just has a black coffee in the mornings and uh, he speaks he speaks pretty highly of intermittent fasting to be honest and. Uh, he has meals at like four, six, eight o'clock. For more info, just uh, go on the RL Diet in partnership with Heaven and Health. Our, our latest player quiz is on Casper's new recruit, Sasaya Fecky. Uh, I don't think many people have got 10 out of 10 on that one. Jim's Messenger, uh, the journalist from Love Rugby League, he's made it pretty hard. <laughs> That's a Sasaya Fecky quiz. Um, and Toronto have re signed 10 players uh, for the new Super League campaign. Uh, Adam Sidlow, Andy Akers, Liam Kerr, Chase Stanley, Blake Wallace, Gary Wheeler and Gar- Gavin Springer have all agreed two-year deals with the Canadian club, while Haki Malouli, Boring Thompson and Josh McCrone have all signed deals for the 2020 season. McCrone, I think he's believed to have taken um, a pay cut to remain with the Wolfpack. Spain head coach Darren Fisher as well has stood down as, um, as the national team's coach. Uh, for six years in charge. I think that is just about us uh, wrapped up, Josh. It's been a good show this week. We've had a lot yeah, of comments. Lot of comments. Uh, Cameron Burkett replied to Louis back saying, you, you were Bob on regarding uh, Sinfield. It needs someone new with passion in the game and the team, but he is a top bloke as well. Uh, Josh Beckett says, Chris Atkin will have a massive year for Salford in his opinion. Um, of course, yeah, and he's obviously not as big as, as Jackson Hastings, but he thinks he'll make a difference. Uh, I think it, I, it, I think he'll have to bide his time though when trying to get trying to to get in over Kevin Brown and too long here in the halves. Uh, but obviously, injuries always come at some point in the season. I think he will get his chance. He may he may be used as an impact player from from the bench. Josh also says he'd take Matty Smith at witness. Uh, he need they, they need someone with experience in the halves. I think he'd be a perfect fit for, for the Vikings, but it's obviously whether he wants to, to move from full-time environment to part-time environment, whether he wants to move and drop down from Super League to Championship, uh, who knows, but there does look to be a, a little gap in the, the market for Woodness uh, getting a half-back, so we'll, we'll just see what happens. It, uh, we, don't, we don't know anything, it's, it's just spe- pure it's speculation yeah. at this point, but uh, it'll be interesting to see where Matty Smith ends up it's a well it's a, a little bit of a shorter lunch hour than usual we'd like to thank our partners heaven and health uh they, they provide meal preps for rugby league players but they also provide meal preps uh just for your average joe just like me um go to heaven heaven dash n dash health dot uk to order your meal preps 
uh, they give you one-to-one -one nutrition advice as well to suit your needs, whether you want to be bulking up, whether you want to be losing weight or just maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Thanks also to our betting partners, Betfred, for always su supplying the, the best odds. Uh, so thank you to Heaven and Health and Betfred. Uh, until next time, we'll see you next Thursday. Uh, and that's it for now.